Hi, I'd like to call the meeting to order and um, ask Bill if you could uh, conduct the roll call for us. Yes, ma'am. Abington. John Stone. Thanks, Sean. Avon. Bridgewater. Shane O'Brien, Town of Bridgewater. Thanks, Shane. Brockton. Duxbury. East Bridgewater. Easton. Halifax. Hanover. Hanson. Don Howard's here. Thanks, Don. Kingston. Pembroke. Plymouth. Dean Downey from Plymouth. Thanks, James. Plimpton. Stoughton. West Bridgewater. Whitman. Dan Salvucci. Thank you. Present. Uh, Rockton Air Transit. Michael Lambert is here. Thanks, Mike. Gatra. Mary Ellen DeFry is here. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Mass Dot District 5. Good afternoon, everybody. Barbara Lachance here. Welcome, Barbara. And Mass Dot Office of Trans Transportation oh, Planning. Wait, <clears throat> How do you know? Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris Klein from Mass Dot's Office of Transportation Planning. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call completed? Completed. Okay, thank you, Bill. This You're meeting welcome. is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones and telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print materials are available upon advanced request. If you would like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833. The notice of non-discrimination rights and protections to beneficiaries with regard to the federal title six slash non-discrimination protections in the state non-discrimination protections is posted in this meeting room and is available <clears throat> in the O'Colony Planning website. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833 for more information. And thank you. Thank you all for attending our meeting. Um, really appreciate it. And I'm going to move on to item number two, which is public comments. Do we have any public comments at this time? Hearing none, I'm going to move forward to item number three, uh, which is the minutes of the February 5th, 2024 meeting. Uh, do I have any corrections, revisions? If not, do I have a motion on the floor to accept? <clears throat> uh, motion, Dan Salbucci, Whitman. Thank you, Dan. Second to Dan. Motion? Second. Thank you, Shane. Uh, the motion carries. Um, item number four, which is communications. I'm gonna turn that over to Sean at this moment. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the first item in the communications packet is the Old Colony Safe Streets for All Action Plan interactive map and dashboard. Uh, the consultant under contract to develop this uh, which is the beta group incorporated has developed an online interactive map and data dashboard that is being made available to the public. Uh, the goal of safe streets for all uh, comprehensive safety action plan is to identify high risk locations and propose countermeasures that can be implemented to prevent serious injuries and eliminate traffic fatalities using the safe systems approach. Uh, the interactive map and data dashboard can be accessed by visiting the safe streets for all project page on the OCPC website. I'm going to interrupt you for one moment. Thank you, Shane. Um, I forgot to uh, vote on the minutes, so I'd rather do this now instead of waiting till later. Absolutely. Um, and that was our discussion, which was the minutes of um, September 5th, and we did have a motion uh, to approve in a second to that. And uh, Bill, if you wouldn't mind doing the roll call on that for us. Yes, ma'am. Um, Abington? Yes. Avon? Yes. Yes. Bridgewater? Yes. Brockton? Yes. Duxbury? East Bridgewater? <coughs> Easton? <coughs> Halifax? Hanover? Hanson? Yes. Kingston? Pembroke? Plymouth? Yes. Thank you. Plimpton? Stoughton? West Bridgewater, Whitman. Yes. 
Mass.otp. OTP. Uh, abstain. I was not here. Mass dot district five. Yes. Brockton, you returns it. Yes. And Katra. Yes. Also, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. And thank you, Shane. Um, I want to uh, go back to um, Sean now. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, the next item in the communications packet is the Duxbury Route 3 bridge replacement uh, lane shifts for stage one construction uh, beginning Sunday, October 6th. Uh, so overnight single lane closures on Route 3 North and South will begin this coming Sunday, October 6th for approximately two weeks. Uh, it will occur from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. each night and are necessary to allow crews to perform uh, the lane shifts that will be in place throughout the stage one of the bridge replacement project. They will not occur on Route 3 southbound on Friday nights or on Route 3 northbound on Sunday nights until after Columbus Day weekend to avoid interfering with holiday traffic down to the Cape. Uh, for any other information on this project, uh, you can contact the project team at massduxburyrt 3 br at dot.state.ma.us. Um, you can also visit the project website uh, for project updates, as well as viewing the April 2024 public meeting video and presentation. The next item is the Massachusetts Safe Routes to School Signs and Lines Grant Program. Uh, it is currently accepting applications for the grant program. The application period closes tomorrow, Friday, October 4th. Uh, this program will des provide design services uh, and up to $10,000 in construction funding to a selected municipality for a low cost infrastructure project around a public elementary, middle or high school. Uh, for more information on this signs and lines program, please visit the hyperlink in the staff report. Next item is another Massachusetts uh, Safe Routes to School grant program, uh, infrastructure grant program. The application period closes October 18th. Eligible projects include infrastructure projects such as transportation construction and capital improvement projects that will improve safety and or increase the number of children walking and biking to school located within two miles of a school uh, serving uh, any grade school children. For more information on this program, please visit the hyperlink in the staff report. The next item is the IWALK International Walk, Bike, and Roll to School Day. It will be held Wednesday, October 9th next week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Students and families across Massachusetts uh, will walk, bike, and roll to school to enjoy a safe, healthy, and active lifestyle. Your school can participate on any day in October that works best. Uh, for more information, please visit the hyperlink in the staff report. The next item is a federal funds and infrastructure office announcement. The federal funds and infrastructure office is the lead agency within the Healy Driscoll administration, implementing a whole of government approach to ensuring the Commonwealth of Massachusetts can <coughs> leverage the historic opportunities available for federal funding. Uh, the next federal funds partnership meeting will be held October 22nd at 2 p.m. To register for the Zoom meeting, please visit the hyperlink in the staff report. And for more information on this event, please visit these hyperlinks. And that is communications, Madam Chair. Uh, you're muted, Noreen. Thank you, Sean. Any questions on the communications? Uh, yes, I do, Noreen. Go ahead, Dan. Okay, in, in there you said walk, bike, or roll. What's roll for? What's that stand for? I believe it's for anybody who would, you know, like to rollerblade or maybe use a skateboard. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, you know, a lot of dirt in the road if they're going to roll on it. Okay, roller skate and stuff like that. Okay. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm just curious. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Dan, are you going to are you going to rollerblade to uh, your next meeting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanks, guys. I'm going to move on to item five, which is reports uh, under item A, BAT, uh, Brockton Area Transit Authority. That would be Mike. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in terms of ridership, we have good news to report. Uh, last month, we completed 340,000 trips, which is a recent history record for us in terms wow. of monthly ridership. 
And just on Tuesday, we completed over 16,000 trips, which is a daily record for us. Um, so that is great to see. And hopefully the good weather will continue and um, we'll be able to keep numbers like that um, repeating. Um, coming up on October 18th, from 12 to 3 p.m. here at the Bat Center, we'll be hosting our annual Customer Appreciation Day, uh, but even more importantly, celebrating our 50th anniversary. Um, all the Most of the Massachusetts RTAs started in 1974. Um, we'll also be unveiling our first battery electric bus, and we'll have a bus wrapped um, like our 1974 fleet uh, to check out as well. Uh, we'll be offering food, including apple cider donuts, uh, music, giveaways, um, and other assorted fun activities. Uh, so please feel free to swing by at any point uh, that afternoon. We'd love to have you. Thank That's you, it. Mike. Can you can you repeat those times again? On October and eighteen, October 18th, twelve to three p.m. 12 to 3 p.m. Um, yep. Just okay. come down to the Bat Center. The event itself will be in the parking lot of the, this administration building, which is on so, Court Street. 10, 18, 12 to 3 p.m. And thank you so much. And congratulations on that ridership. It just keeps going up. So the results are working. Great job. So much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Great job for all of you and, and your, your Bat staff. Um, I'd like to move on to item B, which is GATRA. Uh, that would be Mary Ellen, and that's the <laughs> great Attleboro Transit Authority. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, congratulations to Bat on turning 50. We yes. at GATRA are a little younger, so yeah. we got to wait a couple of years to turn 50, um, but we will uh, watch what they do. Uh, we are also seeing increases in ridership, especially um, with our microtransit service, so we are in the process of hiring drivers for that. They do not need a CDL for that. So if you know anyone who wants to come drive, we are always looking for both CDL and non-CDL, but for this service area specifically, we are seeing great increases in our um, microtransit service. And so we're looking to expand that fleet so we can service more uh, customers. Overall, we are, um, continuing to try and increase our late later evening ridership. And as we do bring drivers on board, we are expanding our hours out and uh, kind of watching how that works to make sure we can find that sweet spot that really helps our passengers get to where they need to get to. Uh, and that is the report from Gatra. Thank you, Marielle. And you folks are making great strides also. Yeah. Any questions for Mary Ellen? as far as the GATRA system? Hearing none. Thank you again, Mary Ellen. And that would be Sean. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as everybody, uh, most people probably know, the South Coast Rail Project will be restoring commuter rail service uh, to the ta to the cities of Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford, as they are the only major cities within 50 miles of Boston without commuter rail service. Uh, currently, they are working on phase one, which will be connecting the southern portion of the line to the Middleborough Lakeville line at the new Middleborough station. Mm -hmm. And over the last month, some of the work that was conducted uh, was train testing from Middleborough all the way down to Fall River, New Bedford, uh, with speeds of up to 79 miles per hour, um, installing new high signs on uh, routes 24 and 140 and Interstate 95, uh, directing people to the new stations and continued construction of a pedestrian bridge over Route 18 in New Bedford uh, with some lane closures on Route 18. If anybody is interested in signing up for the automatic weekly email updates for this project, they can click on the hyperlink in the staff report and enter their email address. And this is just a safety first sign that South Coast Rail has published, uh, just reminding people to be safe when crossing uh, railroad lines and that, uh, you know, telling, informing them about the train testing uh, as well. And that is all for South Coast Rail. Thank you, Sean. Uh, any questions for Sean at this time? Sean, where are those flyers available? 
Like, do they have them in the community, South Coast Trail? I know they have these on their website. I'm not sure if they've been putting these up in the communities themselves. Uh, okay. Just, just checking. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Going to move on to item A, which is the FSL 2024-2028 a transportation improvement program implementation, um, which is built. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so uh, with the federal fiscal year 2024 ending a couple of days ago, and as now we're moving into FFY 2025, uh, so figure the staff report being a nice way to put a bow on FFY 2024 and recap um, th this uh, this past year. So the first one on your on your staff report that you see highlight you see the highlighting. Um, Intersection improvements at Center Street at Carrie and Lyman. I'm happy to announce that a couple of weeks ago that was advertised for construction bids. So uh, that has gone out and very happy to see that. Um, thank you for the Commonwealth for that investment, uh, pushing that project forward. The uh, the next project in Brockton, as we all know, the uh, Center Street at Plymouth Street, that was uh, that was unable to be delivered this year, uh, and will now be avid, will will now be programmed in uh, this year FFY twenty twenty five, and next one and Plimpton the bridge replacement on um, Wintoxic Road the Wintoxic Road bridge over the Wintoxic River uh, that was advertised for um, construction and and then the last one was. Uh, this was actually an effort. This was uh, year two of a uh, uh, advanced construction project uh, installed in Route One Thirty Eight reconstruction, and that construction is ongoing. So uh, that wraps up FFY Twenty Twenty Four, and we're excited to move into Twenty Twenty Five and start developing the uh, Twenty Twenty Five to Twenty Twenty Nine tip in a couple of months. Thank you, Bill. Great work. Uh, a lot of accomplishments. Um, anyone have any questions for Bill on the last report? Well, hearing none, I'm going to move on to new business, which is item A is FFY 2025, the Avon Route, 30, Route 28 corridor study. And uh, this will be a project overview and scope. And that will be Ray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, could you move to the uh, presentation, please? Yeah. Um, yep, the uh, Route 28 CARTA study um, is uh, funded using federal planning funds. It's in the UPWP for fiscal uh, year 2025. Um, next, please. Um, the scope is Route 28 in Avon only. For, it's about 1.7 miles approximately from uh, the Brockton City Line north to through through Avon Avon Center, and uh, ends at the uh, Randolph uh, Town Line. Classified as a principal arterial, which means it's federal aid eligible. It's under the jurisdiction of Mass DOT for its entirety in Avon. Nice. Um, it's a two lane. Uh, mostly, it's a well. It's a two lane and four lane cross section. Uh, mostly, the four lane cross section is the southern section. Uh, close to uh, Brockton. Um, there are no real bicycle lanes or sidewalks. They do have sidewalks, especially in Avon Center. Um, so the purpose of the study is to develop some short-term and long-term improvements um, for traffic circulation, um, to plan for future growth, to, to discern any land use changes, especially major land use changes that would impact traffic and transportation. Um, and of course, we consider all road users, especially vulnerable users like pedestrians, uh, bicycle and transit. Next, please. So the study process um, will have uh, public outreach stakeholder meetings with uh, local Avon partners and Mass DOT. Uh, public meetings with the public so we can discern uh, public uh, any ideas they have as to what improvements they, they might desire or what what their vision is for the um, uh, for the corridor um, 
and uh, develop, we are right now developing an online survey uh, so that we can uh, try to get some input from uh, the public and uh, looking for those people that have been underserved. Um, we're, we're going to be translating into different languages to, to also include those who have been traditionally underserved and try to try to um, expand our sample size. And the larger sample size we have, uh, the better our, our data is going to be. Next, please. Uh, the the study includes six intersections. Uh, we're in we're doing data collection right now. Um, that includes inter intersection turning movement counts, and we'll be doing a uh, level of service service analysis using synchro modeling, um, crash analysis, um, looking at the crash rates, the number and types of crashes, try to get patterns uh, of different crashes and flag flag those intersections. Uh, flat, you know, try to uh, flag prob problems at intersections. Um, we're looking at the state's top 200 crash list. There is one intersection, East High Street, West High Street at Route 28 in the, in the center that's on the top 200 crash list uh, in Massachusetts. Um, we have 10 automatic traffic recorder locations where we can record the 24-hour uh, tra traffic counts, the, the traffic volumes. Uh, also, they, they do speed studies and the percentage of heavy vehicles. Uh, heavy vehicle traffic is, of course, uh, important in this corridor. It's it's an important truck truck route and uh, with, with connections to Route 24. Next, please. Um, future traffic estimated on land use growth and future level of service analysis. So we look at, we try to uh, discern if, if there are going to be any land use changes that are going to impact traffic in the corridor. And then if we we do, we, we use that as a background growth to estimate and model um, future uh, impacts uh, at the intersections uh, based on the future level of service analysis. And also any planned improvements, we'll also model them. <clears throat> there are a couple of planned improvements that we can, which I'll show you later. Um, and improvements uh, based again on public outreach, as I said, um, our improvements are going to be based on the analysis and also the uh, existing plan improvements. So it's important that we collaborate with uh, with both the state and and the town of Avon with MassBOT and Avon. Next, please. So this is um, actually a preliminary uh, concept, and we want to thank the town of Avon, uh, the town planner for for um, sharing this with us. And um, it shows two of the intersections, two of the six intersections. Uh, also on October 9th, um, next week, we'll be holding a road safety audit. The, the town also requested a road safety audit for the town center. And this depicts the town center um, and two major intersections. Uh, north would be to the right, uh, south would be to the left. And the uh, major intersection is East High Street at West High Street and Route 28 uh, to the right and to the to the left. That's West Main Street and East Main Street. They're both signalized intersections. And we've done some uh, field uh, visits. Um, and some of the major things I can tell you real quickly, uh, problems that we found was that East East High Street and West High Street and, and Main Street, that intersection to the right is signalized, but yet there's a lot of turning movement crashes, which is not, shouldn't shouldn't happen at signalized intersections. And uh, we think it's po possibly because there's no protection for left turn movements on East and West, East High Street and West High Street. And there's, um, yeah, there's no, there's no left turn protection. There's heavy left turns. So when people, uh, approach Route 28 from the east or west on that street. There's there's a lot of demand for for left turns, whether they're coming from uh, going eastbound or westbound. So that's one of the things we want to um, to look at. And as we go south, there's actually a, a huge driver actually right next to that intersection uh, from the uh, fire department, and they don't have any Opticon in, in the intersection. That's another observation that we made, um, and. Uh, there's also a on on that side of of um, 
Route 28, there there are some bus stops because there's there's a bat bat bus um, that goes up and down. I believe it's uh, Ashmont, and um, so that in is that that um, bus stop next to that intersection actually has a shelter, which is really good, and it has a a crossing because you can hit the traffic signal. So, um, but as you go south, there's some other near east. Main Street and West Main Street intersection. There's some signals there, and we need better pedestrian prote protection for uh, bat alightment, a lot um, people getting on and off the buses, because um, pedestrian safety and transit go hand in hand. Uh, if you have pedestrian safety, uh, studies show that more people will use the buses, and of course we don't, you know, we want to protect vulnerable um, road users. Um, the other, uh, the other problem we found uh, at the left side of this picture, which is East Main Street and West Main Street, is that there are the right turns from southbound on Route 28 to um, to West Main Street is practically a straight turn. I mean, it's practically a straight movement. So people take that at high speeds, and there's, there's an island there. Um, what this does, this this uh, preliminary concept gets rid of that. Uh, that island, so people who are taking a right turn have to make a 90 degree kind of right turn. It slows them down at 20 miles per hour. Protects the, uh, it actually expands the sidewalk and it, it protects pedestrians there. And the other thing is that they show here, uh, you really can't see it too well, but they they protect the parking. So you have, you have bump outs and it, it actually still keeps the parking. There are a lot of businesses on that side that want the parking too. So this is really a pretty good preliminary concept. Um, so if anybody uh, wants to come to the uh, road safety audit, uh, it's scheduled for October 9th at 1 p.m. at the uh, town office um, next week. Next, please. Um, so this is another uh, location uh, northbound is to the left on this one, and southbound is to the right. This is a major intersection with um, Harrison Boulevard. This is already a TIP project. It's under 25% design. And some of the improvements which are, um, are going to help this intersection is a double left turn on the Harrison Boulevard uh, approaches. So I've, I've noticed that I've used this intersection a lot, taking a left turn from Route 28 north, going left, and the uh, uh, the uh, the lane all is always saturated and ends up backing up into the travel lane, people going through. So this is going to give them two left turns to stack up there and actually coming from Harrison Boulevard also. Um, and the other improvement is at, uh, the other improvements are at East West Spring Street, uh, which I have a typo here. It says Sprint Street, but it's Spring Street. Um, and uh, that realigns, the, it signalizes the intersection. The intersection is not signalized right now, coordinates both the intersections, and it fixes the curb uh, where there was, there's a lot of trucks, a lot of traffic that take, that come from Route 24, Harrison Boulevard, they take a left turn, they go north for a short section, then they take a right on East Spring Street, and the trucks go over that curb. So now this kind of fixes that curb too. So this is a really great project. Um, that that's already in the works uh, for for the Route 28 corridor. So four of the six intersections, we've already got a lot of background information, and we've actually got fixes for two of those six intersections. Next, please. Uh, this is our study timeline. Uh, right now, we're in the October November, and we're we're uh, developing the scope of work and um, the data collection. In December, we're going to uh, start the analysis, the traffic analysis, and the crash analysis, um, and start to identify current uh, deficiencies. Uh, a public survey, we hope to get off the ground in December. At the latest, we'll, we'll probably, even November, we'll probably get that going. And we'll, we'll, ha we'll have that going for a long time into the spring. And then we'll in the spring, we'll have uh, more stakeholder meetings, uh, look at potential improvements, uh, do the future, conduct the future analysis, and then in in the summer of 25, we'll we'll develop the draft report, 
and um, send the draft report around uh, for comment and review and close it out um, in September of 2025. Next, please. So that's that's hopefully uh, in a in a brief nutshell um, what's what's happening with Route 28 in Avon. Thank you, Ray. Great presentation. Yeah, uh, really good. Questions for Ray? Um, not really a question, Chair. Just a a comment. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, thanks to OCPC for. Uh, for this presentation, Ray, I, I think you you spoke to transit's priorities very well. Um, when the 25% plans were released, we reached out to OCPC for their analysis in terms of transit impacts, and they very quickly got back to us uh, with a real um, real good good analysis examination of what the changes meant. Um, in both cases, I think it's worth drawing attention to the fact that the improvements include removal of slip lanes, uh, and so those of you not familiar with the Technical term, you know, those, those are sort of the curved extra lane um, at intersections that allow cars to flow freely onto um, in a, a perpendicular road. For the most part, slip lane. It, this is personal opinion, not not that, but slip lanes are completely uh, unnecessary, uh, especially if there's a turn lane already at, at the perpendicular intersection. Uh, and more importantly, they are rarely signalized. So the whole purpose of signalizing an intersection, of course, first to regulate traffic flow, but also to make crossing possible at all for a pedestrian, much less a vulnerable road user. And then if you throw in a slip lane that's unsignalized, you've completely undermined the whole value of the signalized intersection to the pedestrian. Um, so I think, you know, from a next time you're out and about, just, you know, be cognizant of, of slip lanes that are, that are in your community. Um, and any opportunity you have to advocate for their elimination, uh, I think, uh, benefits uh, the, the full community, including our pedestrians, while having very little negative impact on traffic flow. Thank you, Mike. Um, any other comments or questions? Oh. Thank you so much, Ray. You're welcome. Great presentation. Um, I'm going to move on to the next item, which is B, which is the FFY 2025 Bridgewater Route 104 Corridor Study. Madam Chair, it will be me. Yep, that's you. Next, please. Next. Next. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give you an um, overview for another exciting corridor study project in Bridgewater. Um, this project was enabled under UPWP 3400. Um, Route 104 also was identified as a high priority corridor uh, in our region two years ago. Next, please. Route 104 is basically a running east-west in the entirety of the town of Bridgewater. It traveled through a couple significant locations, including Route 24 Interchange, um, Regional High School, Middle School, Downtown of Bridgewater, and uh, Bridgewater State University. The corridor is under majority under local jurisdiction, uh, exception uh, is over Route 24 overpass. It's under MassDOT jurisdiction. The urban it is classified as an urban minor arterial road. Next, please. There are four key steps for the corridor study, uh, including collecting the transportation, uh, planning, and operational data. Uh, as we speak, um, the 24-hour continuous count and TMC has been collected at this moment, so all the data will be finalized before the end of the month. Uh, we Secondly, we'll provide short-term, long-term improvement development, including the analysis with our travel demand model, Synchro, and also we will um, use MassDOT uh, GIS data, uh, as well as a couple data platform, as you know, um, conveyor, replica, um, and in data. We also will compare 
the future traffic by using OCPC regional trans travel demand model um, and the state travel demand model. And this project is um, result driven, data driven. Uh, we will be involving the communities, regional partners, um, and the MassDOT and District 5 uh, in coming up the future recommendations, including any short-term and long-term improvement plans. Um, the last one, key step, uh, we started already uh, the public and community outreach, um, including uh, SurveyMonkey uh, with over uh, 12 questions, uh, very similar to what Ray mentioned. Um, we will involve the public uh, in the uh, traveler preference survey. Uh, we will build a website um, so everybody can see all the documents and our progress for the project. Next, please. So the major product for the corridor study, uh, not only the, um, um, the report, but also with the key recommendations, including a multimodal planning, strategies. Um, we will use uh, Synchro software to identify any um, intersections, including signalize or stop control intersection, any safety deficiencies uh, in terms of capacity and safety recommendations. Since all you know, um, Bridgewater Route 1, all four is a hub for MBTA uh, station and uh, Brockton mm -hmm. Area Transit uh, run the transit route. Uh, for the university, uh, so we will be coordinating with a list long um, a long list of our regional partners uh, for this study. We will also complete um, implementation plan, including some general cost categories and uh, the timeline and all available funding resource in this study. Next. Uh, this is uh, basically our work plan and the timeline for the development project. Uh, we already started uh, some preliminary uh, study, including data collection, online research, and we are hoping to provide a draft report in around May. Um, and uh, we are spending the time, we will spending the time uh, forming a steering a work group for the study. And uh, the core uh, practice is the uh, analysis for the study uh, starting from now to March. So we are very excited for this project, working with a very dedicated community with uh, Bridgewater. And uh, we also will support um, their vision to reality, planning and implementation plan for downtown uh, Bridgewater. Uh, next, please. I'm very happy to receive any questions, comments for this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ko Chung. Not any questions, comments? Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, just a quick comment on our end, uh, Town of Bridgewater. We're excited yeah. to uh, be uh -huh. part of this. Um, so uh, we look forward to uh, being part of this process and uh, seeing what results it uh, takes. Thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. I'm going to move on to item C, which yeah. is why. 2025 Plymouth Route 3A, South Carter study, and that would be with the project overview and scope, and that would be Bill. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, so, Sean, if you just want to jump to the uh, PowerPoint. So, thanks, everyone. Uh, so, um, Ray and Kuo did a great job kind of detailing what goes into a Carter study, and this Carter study has a lot of the same, so uh, I'll, I won't spend a lot of time rehashing that. Um, so this is, this card of study is, um, I want to go to the next one, I think it's, uh, so the, the geographic scope of this card of study is kind of the southern half, if you will, of Route 3A in Plymouth, um, starting off with Sandwich Street, uh, comes into Route 3A, so the intersection of Sandwich Street at Warren Avenue, that's the northern, northern start of this card of study and stretches uh, 14 miles southward on Route 3A to the Bourne Town Line. And we're also including um, Herring Pond Road in this car study as well. That's a two mile section of roadway uh, from, from its intersection with Route 3A to um, 
to the Bourne Town line. So in total, we're looking at about 16 miles of roadway. Uh, you can see uh, most of it is MassDOT jurisdiction. All of Route 3A is uh, MassDOT jurisdiction. The uh, Herring Pond Road would be the jurisdiction of the town of Plymouth. Um, it's a uh, it's a principal arterial. Um, and uh, just want to go to the next page. So again, this this is the study process. Again, very similar to what uh, Ray and Kochanga spoke about for their respective corridor studies. Um, going to be holding a, a series of uh, engagement with stakeholders and uh, public meetings, and also doing a survey. So uh, the timeline for these uh, correspond to the same as the the last uh, the two other studies. Next. So you see the the data data collection uh, is underway. Uh, there are um, automatic traffic recording stations along the uh, all counting locations, I should say, along the route that we're looking at. Those record um, overall overall volume, heavy vehicle traffic and speeds. Uh, we're looking at a total of fifteen intersections, and we're looking at crash analytics. Um, we've been uh, coordinating early coordination with the town of Plymouth. I know that. Uh, pedestrian access and mobility and safety has been brought up on the on the southern end of the study area. Uh, this, this is some areas where residents have uh, raised the concern about having crosswalks and um, other pedestrian other crossing amenities. So that's something that we I mean we would be looking at that anyways, but uh, we'll pay special attention to that area. Uh, there's also um, a uh, uh, high, there are areas of this corridor that have a high level of hazard in terms of uh, sea level rise. Uh, there's a uh, there's a section that's very close to the waterline, low lying, uh, with a northeast facing shoreline, uh, and that's a uh, you know highly vulnerable to uh, sea level rise and battering waves. I mean, it's an area that we've seen flooding in the past, uh, so that'll be a component of this corridor study as well. Again, um, so as you can see, like developing those, um, the future trends analysis and future build conditions, and then um, coming up with, uh, towards the second, towards the, the latter half of the study, coming up with uh, potential improvements for um, this corridor. Again, like I said, the timeline, basically the same as uh, the, uh, the two other studies looking for a final report um, some, sometime early next summer or midsummer. And then, um, so starting now, data collections underway. We're going to be moving into that public engagement process, working with stakeholders. Then, when we head into 2025, uh, doing a lot of that, doing a lot of that um, improvement uh, identification and um, coordinating with stakeholders on the priorities for this corridor. And with that, so that's my uh, contact information there, my email address, my phone number. Um, so you, uh, you can answer any questions now, or if you have any uh, any questions offline, feel free to email me or call me. Thank you, Bill. Great job. Good presentation. Um, any questions or comments for Bill on this? Okay, so as we go along, you'll be updating your progress on all of the projects that we listened to today. Yes, ma'am. So uh, all all three corridor studies will have a uh, will have periodic updates throughout okay. the uh, year. Okay, great. That's a lot of work. Wow. Got got your question, Bill. Go ahead, Dan. You have the floor. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, looking at all these projects, there's a lot of work on the day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Incredible. That's how much. That's how much we invest in our community. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And we're just lucky to have these professionals doing this work <laughs> for us. I thank, <laughs> I you all. So. thank you. All of you. You know, excellent, excellent work. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're on again, Bill. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so uh, a couple updates for the local technical assistance program. Uh, we recently completed a traffic study for the town of Hanson. 
not, I'm sorry, not Hanson, Halifax. That, uh, yeah, looking at um, the uh, travel speeds on Route 106 uh, through their business district. Uh, so that's basically the area where, like, for Walmart and Stop and Shop, um, Cumberland Farms is. Um, so uh, we looked at uh, travel speeds in that area and the uh, speed limit and potential um, the process for uh, extending speed uh, business district speed zoning through that area. So that data analysis has been distributed to both the town and MassDOT and uh, we're uh, happy with that product. And we have a new request, um, town of Abington uh, looking at uh, multi-way stop applications at a couple of intersections in, in town, uh, president, presidential drive and McKinley drive um, and uh, walk a lane at Melinda Drive. Uh, so that um, that data collection is already actually already been completed uh, and that analysis is underway and we should have that turned out to the town uh, in MassDOT very shortly. And if I go to the next one. And that's the uh, status of our LTA program right now. And that, as, as Ray mentioned earlier, the um, there's a road safety audit underway in the town of Avon, uh, which is scheduled for next week. Thank you, Bill. Thank uh, you. I don't have any uh, comments or questions for Bill. All righty, hearing none, I'm going to move forward to item 8B, which is staff reviews on ENFs, EIRs, MPCs, and that would be Kyle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Uh, so we have one new project um, in the town of Plimpton, uh, 123 and 125 West Street single family homes. This project is in regards to the construction of two single family homes on respective lots off of West Street. And the homes will be serviced by individual Title V septic systems and private wells. Uh, some certificates. First one for West Bridgewater, Crescent View Farm, residential subdivision. This is an environmental notification form. And this certificate states that this project does not require an environmental impact report. Next is towns of Abington, Rockland, Weymouth. It's the South Weymouth Naval Air Station redevelopment project. And this is a supplemental draft environmental impact report. And the certificate states that this project adequately and properly complies with MEPA. The last certificate for the town of Plymouth, 16 Town Wharf. The certificate states that this project adequately and properly complies with MEPA. And then just a few public notices um, for towns of Easton, Hanover, West Bridgewater. It's for a notice of application and issuance of a, gra of a draft groundwater discharge permit. For Easton, it's for um, the Quesit Commons um, at 150 gallons of sanitary wastewater per day. Town of Hanover, the North Point Apartments for just over 13,000 gallons of treated sanitary wastewater per day. And then West Bridgewater, the Ajax United Drive at just over 23,000 gallons of sanitary wastewater per day. And that concludes the MEPA report. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, any questions for Kyle on the notifications? Alrighty, hearing none, I'm gonna go on to item 8C, which I open up to everyone. These are regional concerns, um, local communities, uh, regarding transportation issues. All right, we've got a lot of stuff to think about, a lot of stuff going on as Dan alluded to earlier. Yeah. Um, so um, we'll just, again, thank the staff for all their um, all their work and what they're doing in, in our region. It's really, it's really shaping, shaping up very well. Um, anyone have any comments before we leave the meeting? All righty, so I'm gonna go into item nine. And I'm gonna thank everybody for attending as usual and being part of the process for us because we need everybody's comment, comments in order to do a 
a good job and a better job. So thank you all. So do I have an motion for adjournment? So move, Dan Salbucci. Second that. Second. Okay, Second. thank you, John. Uh, all in favor, and we can just wave. Aye. 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 Everybody in favor. Okay, and see you next time. Thank you thank all you so much for attending. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.